Are you going to make a jittery do? Problems with sound. All right. Here we go. Uh, DHS physics. Guys, draw a picture for number 13. If you've already done number 13, that's wonderful. I'm going to draw a picture just to remind you here that if you have a pipe, whether it be a didgeridoo, okay, or an oboe, an oboe would be a closed end, a didgeridoo would be a totally open pipe, a flute would be a closed end, uh, a clarinet would actually be a closed end, a flute would kind of be open on both ends. How many of you have ever used a, played a xylophone? All right, that uses a tube under the things, that's an open end pipe. Trayvon, you played a steel drum? You seen a steel drum before? Yeah, that's kind of like a closed end pipe. They don't. They do have steel drums in Jamaica. Okay. Frequency of the wave inside the pipe is 440 hertz, right? That's frequency. So imagine you're playing the didgeridoo at 440 hertz of a frequency. You're making that noise with your mouth, right? The length of the didgeridoo, the length of the didgeridoo is 110 centimeters. So how many is that in meters? 1.10 meters, right? But what is the relationship between length of a tube and resonance frequency? The length is one half of a wavelength. So one half of a wavelength is the length of a tube. That's the lowest frequency. You can do other higher frequencies, but that's the lowest resonance frequency. Okay, so yes, this is the relationship between wavelengths and lengths of pipe. It goes in increments of one half. So that means twice the length is equal to the wavelength. So twice the 1.10 meters is equal to the wavelength. So the wavelength of the note being played is what? 2.20 meters. That's the wavelength. Now, it says, what is the velocity of the sound in helium gas? So imagine you have helium gas inside of your didgeridoo. That's going to change the sound of the didgeridoo. Have you ever swallowed helium? Okay, is your voice a pipe? It is, it's a basically two-ended open pipe. When you swallow helium gas, it changes the velocity of the sound. Velocity is wavelength times frequency. So what does that happen to your voice? It sounds higher pitched, right? That's because of the velocity of sound waves changes. Mm -hmm. So the frequency must change. So your wavelength is 2.20 meters and your 100, 440 hertz, which is actually, a, I think it's a G note. 440 hertz, I think, is a G note. So what did you guys calculate? 960 hertz, 968 hertz. Rounds up to 969 meters per second meters per second. So that's really fast, right? Really fast. 969 meters per second. Hmm? Yes, for pipes, for playing sound through pipes, playing sound through piped instrument. Yeah, you're not gonna use this for stringed instruments, for the violin, you wouldn't use this. You would use this for the flute, the clarinet, the oboe, the didgeridoo, the trumpet, the trombone. Anytime you're blowing air through a pipe to create music, this is the relationship between length of the tube and wavelength. They are in multiples of half. No. Okay. Well, two-thirds is the next resonance frequency, Ariana. It's not two-thirds. It's oh, two-thirds here. So... It would be three halves a wavelength. This is a note, okay? This is a note that causes constructive interference. It causes it to be louder at a wavelength. At three halves a wavelength, you would hear that same note again. At, three, at five halves wavelength, you would hear that same note again. It's a resonance frequency. So for example, could you play an A in a low key and then an A in a higher key? And then an A in a higher key after that? And then an A in a higher key after that? That's what this is saying. Just use the first one. Start with the lowest. Okay, for number 14, Chris Parham, spray bottle. 14, again, draw yourself a pipe. You got a pipe with waves in it. Pipe 
with sound in it. The frequency of a tuning fork is unknown. Okay, so you got the tuning fork down here. There's your tuning fork. A student uses an air column at 27 degrees and finds resonances spaced by 20.2 centimeters. So the length of the tube <clears throat> is 20.2 centimeters. Well, do we use centimeters or meters? We use meters, 0 0.202 meters. That's the length. What's the frequency of the tuning fork? Use the speed calculated in example problem two for the speed of sound and air at 27 degrees. In your textbook, it says the speed is 347 meters per second. That's the velocity of air, the velocity of sound and air, 347 meters per second. So we have length. Can we find the wavelength of the actual wave? Yes, we can. How? Length equals one half wavelength. Okay, so two times 0 0.202 meters is equal to your wavelength. So that's 0 0.404 meters is equal to your wavelength. How are we going to find the frequency? We're going to use the same equation we've all, always used. Velocity equals wavelength times frequency. Right, Alejandro? You sleep, Alejandro? Yeah, he is. 347 meters per second. Wavelength, 0 0.404 meters. Frequency, solve for frequency. Travion, what'd you get for frequency? Travion. Bernard. Bernard Munn, what'd you get for frequency? Eight hundred and fifty nine hertz. It rounds up to eight fifty nine. <laughs> you don't round, you truncate. Well, then she should round. Sig figs, you need to round. If you don't round, you truncate. That's a shame. So as you can see, uh, really the only things, the only equations you're working with here are this and this. Very simple equation, very simple algebra. Okay? You're going to do 15, period. This is DHS Physics. Like, comment, subscribe, and smash the bell, period. <laughs> <laughs>